Good morning, Bedford United. That was weak. I have been gone for like a month. Come on now. Good morning, Bedford United. There we go. There we go. It's good to be back. It's good to hear you're still alive. All is good. That's great. There's still energy in the room, and I'm sure energy online too. Uh, friends, whether you're tuning in online to see us today, midweek, or you're at Berwick Camp, which many of our folks are right now. Maybe you're on your phone at Berwick watching the stream. Uh, we're glad to welcome you to worship. My name is Matt Fillier, and I'm the, the lead minister around these parts at Bedford United. And I've been gone for a little while, so I really need to give a very hearty thank you to all of our preachers and all of our musicians for July. Let's give them a round of applause, everybody. They were rocking. They filled the house. They did a wonderful job. David Hurt, I hear, finally got an opportunity to take some shots at me because I've had basically unrestricted access for four years to pick on David, so that's really good. Tony, how you doing? He's been gone for a month. Doesn't he look fabulous? He looks like he's ready to bring it today, right, Tony? Yeah. Tony's our minister of music, and behind me is the amazing Reverend Katie Avon, who is off for the month of August into September, and she's not excited about it at all. Look, okay, it's the vacation is right through those doors. She can taste it. She can taste it. She's gonna go, right? And for all of us who know uh, Paige, our families and youth minister, children's minister, Paige is doing fabulous. Uh, she's not with us for a year because she has someone called Marshall uh, to look after. So Marshall has been born. I don't know if you've all seen the pictures on Facebook. Looking beautiful. And uh, everybody is well, all is well, life is good and thriving. And that meant that, uh, you know, we, we still have Lauren, right, who's, who's kicking it uh, in Sunday school and helping us out there. And so then we had this kind of, well, what do we do now that Paige is gone? And Katie and I were like, we're not. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. And BUC was like, nope, nope, you're not. Uh, we need to find somebody to lead our family ministry while Paige is away for the next year. And that person, big round of applause as she comes forward here to introduce herself, that wonderful person is going to be Caitlin Smithers. Yay! <laughs> welcome, welcome, Caitlin. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to BUC. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Can you hear me? Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, so as Matt mentioned, my name is Caitlin, uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm going to be covering for Paige over the next year. So <laughs> thank you for such a warm welcome. Just a teeny weeny bit about yourself, Caitlin? Just a bit. <laughs> yeah. One sentence is good. <laughs> okay, I have maybe more than one sentence. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I'm really, really excited to spend this time with you. And um, as someone who is gay, I'm really, really excited to be able to be part of an affirming church and to be able to show you the love that God gives us so freely and to be able to feel that from all of you and see where the spirit and where God work with us. So um, I'm going to be around for the next year and I'd like to get to know as many of you as possible in that time. So please come say hi and uh, introduce yourself and maybe say your name a few times so I can get it. <laughs> Not always my strength. Um, but I'm really, really excited for all of our time together and some of the fun things we'll get to do together. So, thank you. Yay! Thanks, Caitlin. We're going to officially baptize Caitlin later because she's going to light the candles. And once you've lit the candles, you're like, you're in at Bedford United. That's it. Um, so, friends, a couple other announcements I want to mention. Uh, let's see here. Some really good stuff that's going on. Carmen Lansdowne is going to become the moderator of the United Church of Canada today at United Memorial in Vancouver. She will be the first indigenous woman to be a leader of a major religious denomination. It's going to be an event, and it's happening at 5 p.m. our time. And if you go to the United Church of Canada YouTube channel, you should be able to get it. Or check out United Memorial in Vancouver. It'll surely be on their page, too. I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, let me see here. So there's no projection during the summer because we are giving our AV team a little bit of a break so they can have less people back there and get a well-deserved vacation. So when you came in, you could get a hymn book. There's still some at the back. But fear not, everyone, because Jennifer Johnson, our administrator, has sent you the hymn lyrics. They are on the web page. So if you've got your little handy-dandy phone, you can whip that right up and sing along with Mr. Tony Janes. He would love that. 
It's not like Tony's going to ask you to sing or stand or stand on your head or something today. That doesn't sound like Tony at all. Um, so you'll be able to do that. So please uh, take a look at that, participate that way while we uh, adjust for the summer. We are excited to have a corn boil. And if you don't like corn, you can get hot dogs on the 28th starting at 4.30 right here at the crossing in front of Bedford United. So if you're in person and you're in the neighborhood, that is going to be a lovely time around the campfire. And we're going to sing songs and play and hang out and have a great time. Beautiful corn boil. Come on down. It will be lovely. And the rain date for that is the next day, the 29th. Uh, let me see here. Also, just a reminder to folks, in case you're looking for community, because lots of people are ways to connect, if you'd like to do coffee, it happens on Tuesday. The coffee group meets on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. every Tuesday at the McDonald's on Larry Utec. So you can go check them out there. Uh, they'd love that. And I think that's all the ones that I have for today, which is great. The rest are in your email. So check that out or sign up for our weekly newsletter. We would love that. So before we get into the land and, and these kinds of things with, with the wonderful Reverend Katie Avon, she's, she's just pumped to do this. She's pumped, right? This is it for a month. Um, you know, I, I got to do this one because I've been gone for a month and you miss me. So what do you call a cow... In the midst of an earthquake, a milkshake. Oh. To the chair of council goes the win. I figure the more dad jokes I do, the more I earn another month off where you'll be like, go away, Matthew. Don't come back. All right, Katie, we'll turn it right, over to you. Okay. Thank you. I've got my own dad joke. Yeah, sorry. Uh, what did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? Supplies. Oh. My kids love that one. <laughs> okay. Um, so we, I think by now, we all know that we live, work, and worship on the land of the Mi'kmaq people. We have this, this land acknowledgement every week, and I do hear people say, well, why do we keep doing this, right? We're just kind of hearing the same thing over and over again. Um, so the reason we continue to acknowledge the land is because we're committed as followers of Jesus to the journey and the work of reconciliation. And I'm really excited to share with you that we are gonna be welcoming a team of coordinators from the North American Indigenous Games later this fall, uh, who I connected with over the summer, and they are gonna come and do a presentation here, and hopefully um, we as a community are going to find a way to participate either as a volunteer group to be able to offer our space, um, but we're going to start that conversation with, um, with the local group of organizers for the Na North American Indigenous Games. And that is one of the recommendations from the Truth and Reconciliation Council. And our community's willingness to do that means we are doing the work. It means we're doing the work. And that gives me deep satisfaction and such deep joy to be a part of this amazing community. So we're looking forward to that. And um, I think it's time for Caitlin to light the candles. I, I think so. Caitlin, so it's Katie, time. You know how to do this. So Katie, are you going to do the baptism today? I will baptize All right. her. Very good. All right. Caitlin, what am I doing? Well, usually we have this thing lit, but so every um, so. <laughs> do you want me to do that part? No, no, it's coming. I got <laughs> it. One match left. Is there? Okay, it's fine. So um, this is for Caitlin, and also for anyone else who is new here and joining us. Every week at the beginning of worship, we light our Christ candle and our affirming candle, and this is one of the ways that we affirm our values as a community who is committed to a radical welcome of all people. As oh, soon as we can get um, the match lit. Impressive. Yeah, okay, so um, you can see right here on the left turn. Oh. We, yeah, cheat that's sheets. right. Love we got some cheat sheets. sheets. And so most nice. folks from Bedford United know exactly what to say. Yeah, I'm gonna ask them. Thank yeah, you. so you can use this to light. So I'll say it and you do the lighting, ready? God is here. All the time. And all the time. God is here. There we go. 
All are welcome. All the time. And all the time. All are welcome. Yay! <laughs> we did it! You passed! Yeah, right. yeah. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Can I get you to rise if you're able? And good morning to everyone at home. <clears throat> we are going to begin with more voices, number 33. Jesus came bringing us hope. So now's your time to clap your hands, although I know you're holding a book. But you can tap the book if you need to. It's an easy tune. Jesus came bringing us hope. Jesus came bringing us hope. Jesus came bringing us hope. Hallelujah forevermore. Jesus came bringing us hope. Jesus came bringing us hope. Jesus came bringing us hope. Hallelujah forevermore. That was number 33. I have to tell you how happy it makes me to see people scrambling through the books, <laughs> trying to find the number. We never get to do that with the screen going, right? Jesus came bringing us hope. Let's sing it again. Multitask now. Clap. Turn to your neighbor. Say hello. Do all kinds of stuff. See what you can do during the singing of this. Jesus came bringing us hope. Welcome each other. It's good to see you. Jesus came bringing us hope. Jesus came bringing us hope. Jesus came bringing us hope. Hallelujah forevermore. Jesus came bringing us hope. Jesus came bringing us hope. Jesus came bringing us hope. Hallelujah forevermore sing love now jesus came bringing us love jesus came bringing us love jesus came bringing us love hallelujah forevermore sing joy jesus came bringing us joy smile jesus came bringing us joy jesus came bringing us joy hallelujah forevermore one more time joy jesus came bringing us joy jesus came bringing us joy jesus came bringing us joy hallelujah forevermore i almost lost it looking at katie when i said the smile she stopped singing and just showed her whites <laughs> like okay I'll do it. We're going to turn to number 28 in more voices. God of the Bible. Number 28. And we'll just, we'll skip verse 3, so all the rest, all right? And while I'm speaking, I just want to throw this out there. So now that I'm back, you know, the plans for Christmas have begun. I know, I know it's August. Forget the gift giving and all that. I'm talking about the joyous singing. So last year we had our Christmas, well, took the place of a cantata, and there were many people who didn't sing that normally sing, and afterwards they're like, well, why did we not sing? It was so good. So keep in mind, I will be advertising and spamming your emails over the next few weeks, and we will begin at the last week of September. And also we're looking for new choir members, right, Debbie? Of course. So yeah, and oh, one more thing. What used to be Regenesis will now be called Generations, and it's for ages 10 up to 110. Is there anyone that old here? No. Anyway. But, yeah, so if you're interested in singing, taking part in something like that, there will be more information on the go. That's all of my announcements. Sorry, you haven't heard from me a month. I'm rambling. God of the Bible, God in the Gospel, Hope seen in Jesus, hope yet to come. You are our center, daylight or darkness, freedom or prison. You are our hope. Sing it. 
Fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise, God always faithful, you do not change. Fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise, God always faithful, you do not change. God in our struggles, God in our hunger, suffering with us, taking our part. Still you empower us, mothering spirit, freeing, sustaining from your own heart. Fresh as the morning, sure as the sun. Four. Not by your finger, not by your anger, will our world order change in a day. But by your people, fearless and faithful, all paper lanterns lighting the way. Fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise, God all change. Fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise, God always faithful, you do not change. Hope we must carry, shining and certain, through all our turmoil, terror and loss, bonding us gladly, one to another, Till our world changes, facing the cross. Lift your voices now. Fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise. God always faithful, you do not change. Fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise. God always faithful, you do not change. We're going to do the chorus one time more without music. You're all going to be the choir today. Here we go. Fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise, God always faithful, you do not change. Fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise, God always faithful, you do not change. For our final song, before we move on to the sacred story, we're going to turn to number 21. We need more voices. Open our hearts. And this is always a good prayer before we hear the sermon or anything else that's coming, just to get our spirits and our thoughts in that place to hear what God might want to say to us. So let's sing this together. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our lives to you, O loving God. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our Again, open our hearts, open our minds, open our lives to you, O loving God. Open our hearts, open our minds. Open our lives to you, O loving God. 
Come open our hearts. You can be seated. Amen. We are going to invite Bev to come forward, and she's going to share with us a very special reading from the Gospel of Luke. Good morning. I wonder if you ever said to someone, don't be afraid. I wonder has some, someone ever said to you, don't be afraid. I wonder what we're scared of these days. I wonder what gives us peace and hope and a sense of belonging to something larger than our fragile selves. Jesus and our ancestors of faith wondered too. Let's listen to the sacred story of Luke 12, verses 32 to 40. Don't be afraid, my friends, because the Holy One delights in giving you the kingdom. Don't be so occupied with getting so you forget to respond to God's giving. That means you can sell your possessions and give generously to the poor. You can have a different kind of savings plan, one that never depreciates, good idea, one that never defaults, one that can never be plundered or by crooks or interest rates or destroyed by natural calamities. Your treasure will be stored in the heavens, since where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. I'm not, ju I'm not just talking theory. There is an urgency in all of this. If you're apathetic and complacent, then you'll miss the moment of opportunity. You should be wide awake and on your toes like servants who are waiting for their master to return from a big wedding reception. They'll have their shoes on and their lamps lit so they can open the door for them as soon as they arrive home. How fortunate those servants will be when the master knocks and they open the door immediately. You know what the master will do? They'll put on an apron and sit them down at the kitchen table and they'll serve the servants a feast. And later they come home, whether it's at midnight or even later, just before dawn, the more blessed you will be. Herein is wisdom. Amen. It's very easy not to be fearful when we feel that there's nothing to be fearful of, right? So I want you in your mind to just accept that thought that there's nothing to be afraid of so we don't feel afraid. But when we are afraid, it's my prayer that we could remember that moment when we didn't feel afraid because there was nothing to be afraid of. And the truth is, as human beings, yeah, we do get afraid, we get scared, but we still follow one who's greater than all of our fears, right? And Matt's going to talk about that this morning. But before we do, let's just shut our eyes and think about not being afraid. Maybe there's someone you know who's going through something and they are scared right now. And you can send your fearless energy their way as we sing, Don't Be Afraid. Don't be afraid. My love is stronger. My love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, and I have promised, promised to be always near. That's number 90 in more voices. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, my love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, and I have promised, promised to be always near. It's one last time. Don't be afraid, my love is stronger, 
my love is stronger than your fear don't be afraid my love is stronger and i have promised promised to be always near and i have promised promised to be always Thank you, Tony, for that wonderful, wonderful prayer we were able to share in. It's going to get all set up. Man, Bedford United, I have missed you. Wow, I think I remember how to do this and stuff. We'll find out pretty soon. All right. So I've been gone for a little while, so it's, it's definitely time for a pop quiz, right? We need a pop quiz this morning. So what is the most commonly used phrase the entirety of the Bible, you finish it for me, it is, don't be, uh, no, it ain't all men, it's don't be, uh, don't be afraid. Now, you ever notice that whether it's Isaiah, or Jesus, or your mom, or your dentist who tells you not to be afraid, there is always a really good reason for you to be afraid when somebody says that, right? And today is no exception. Um, I remember the last time I had a root canal, I was in Halifax, and the dentist leaned over in my ear and said, now Matthew, don't be afraid, but tell me if this hurts. Zzz, right? Like, no, nothing to be afraid of at all. No, I'm just feeling great. Doctor, yeah, that's great. Uh, True Stewart is laughing for sure on that one. So what do we mean by that phrase? And why do so many people draw comfort from it, right? This morning, just like Bev invited us, I want to invite you to go back in your life. Have you ever said that to someone, or has someone said that to you? What was that like? What was happening? How did it make you feel? Was it meaningful? Feel free to go back there. Now, I recently found myself using this phrase in the month of July during my family vacation, <clears throat> which I'm going to tell you a story about. Anybody ever been to Magic Mountain? Anybody go, anybody go to the mountain? Yeah, I see some, right? So we took Isabel to Magic Mountain in Moncton. And uh, the reason we took her is because they have a wave pool, and Izzy and I are part fish, part seal. We're newfies at heart that way. So we had a great time swimming. Lorna got in on it too. It was lovely. They have a big amusement park there. So we figured, when in Rome, right? When in Rome. We're not amusement park folks, but we're like, when in Rome. So the first ride we try is the carousel, right? Carousel's great, man. Like these fancy horses and little twinkling lights. And it goes really slowly up and down to vaguely scary music, actually. It's pretty creepy. But, you know, Isabel loved it, right? She had a great time. It was awesome. We all got off. We are like, this is lovely. And then <laughs> someone, well, who remain nameless, <clears throat> had the thought, we should do one more. We should do one more while we're here, right? We've got to do one more. We've got to get our money's worth. So we decided to try one more ride. Now, the ride that we tried was not called the slow, gentle ride into the sunset. No, no. And we didn't try, you know, the magical unicorn ride around the rainbow. No, we, we didn't do that. The one we tried was called the scrambler. <laughs> now, when I told Katie this, this, she was like, what was your first clue? You shouldn't get on it. It was called the scrambler, Matt. Anyway, so we didn't see it in operation. We just said, hey, this looks great. Let's do this. We can all sit together. It'd be great, right? So here's how the scrambler works. You get in this like teacup bench, you're strapped in, there's me, Izzy, and Lorna, my daughter's six years old, so we're all strapped in, so this thing spins around and around, and goes up and down and in and out, while it's doing that, faster and faster and faster, uh, the scrambler, I'm told in other countries, is known as the vomit comet, it is really bad, right, it is terrifying, like there was screaming and crying, and that was just me, right, <laughs> But Isabel was genuinely terrified, and you're, you know, as a parents out there, you know what I'm talking about. When your kid's genuinely afraid, that freaks you out. Like, and we couldn't get off. We're stuck there, right? There's no getting out of that. So what are we going to do? So I look at Lorna, and both of us put our arms around Izzy, and I say, okay, Isabel, let's all just close our eyes. Don't be afraid, and we'll get through this together. And it's not that the fear stopped. Everybody was still scared out of our minds. But we didn't panic. We didn't panic, and we held on till the ride was over. 
And so now in my household, uh, you know, when you're feeling a little off, that's now a, a description of your condition as a mortal being in the universe. It's to say, how you doing today? I'm scrambled. Yeah, that's, that's what we say in our house. But as it got off the ride, you know, part of me in reflecting later was kind of going, we're in this situation where there's all these forces acting on us. You can't get off. All this stuff is happening to you. You have no control. And you're spinning around and around and around, in and out, up and down. You don't know what's going on. I wonder how many people on planet Earth feel like they are on the scrambler all the time right now. Right? When we got off the ride, Lorna, being the resident sage and clinical therapist in our family, who will no doubt be doing Isabel's therapy later on, um, she, she said to us, she's like, you know, we should have a conversation about what do we mean when we say don't be afraid. Because when we say that, we're not saying it's not okay to be afraid. Or we're not trying to make somebody feel ashamed that they're afraid or that their fear isn't legitimate. We're not trying to minimize it. It's not that it's irrational. It's okay to be afraid. And I think the best translation in the United Church of Canada, that phrase, is when we say to each other, because God is, we are not alone. That's what we're talking about, right? Where your fear is, there your faith will be also. That was the good news of that day for us. You know, in that moment when everything was out of control and it was so wild, we still found hope and we still found peace and we still found love together. That is good news. And I was wearing out every scripture reading I could think of. You know, this too shall pass. The Lord is my shepherd. Uh, I have a whole new appreciation for Paul and Romans going, who hopes for what they see? We hope for what we haven't seen yet. and We wait for it with patience. Right? Every living thing on earth feels fear. Everything. I remember when I was a kid, I had a great fear of spiders. And so I was at this petting zoo, and the attendant said, you know, I've got a tarantula here. And I decided, all right, I'm going to face my fear. Right? So I put my hand out, and she put the tarantula in my hand. I was terrified, right? But you know what was fascinating, what the tarantula did? As soon as it landed in my hand, legs of the tarantula, like this, shaking, shaking. And I was like, oh, what's it doing? What's it doing? And the attendant said to me, she's scared of you because she's feeling your heartbeat. And that's not the normal environment she's in, so she doesn't know what's going to happen to her, so she's afraid. It's going to take time for her to calm down. It's like, wow. Every living thing, even a tarantula, feels fear, right? So what are we afraid of this morning? I'm not afraid of tarantulas anymore. I'm not sure I want to do it again, but, you know, what are you afraid of this morning? And I think one of the things our ancestors of faith were really afraid of, you know, is what happens after they die. Would they take the cosmic elevator ride upstairs and sit on a cloud and play some harps for eternity? Or would they go all the way down to the bad place and roast over an open pit barbecue for eternity? I mean, that's a pretty important question to figure out, right? At Bedford United, we don't really subscribe to a three-tier universe, kind of like, we like quantum physics a little more and, and science. Um, but it makes me wonder when I read this piece from Jesus... Maybe we need to be a little bit more afraid or at least concerned about what happens after we die. Not so much to the peril of our eternal salvation, but to the salvation of the planet and everything that depends thereupon, right? Imagine if we were more thoughtful about the choices we each make as individuals and as societies, and if our number one value was, if I do this, what is the cost to the planet and all the life that is going to come after me? Imagine if that was the first conversation we had. I think that's where Jesus is at. He says, you know, like, I've got a different savings plan in mind for all of you. Uh, it, it can give you everything. It'll give and give and give again. It's like a wallet that will never wear out. And it's called creation, right? And what kind of a world would it be instead of focusing on the narrow and selfish individual agenda if we treasured the miracle of our place in this creation, this whole cosmos, we have this place to live and be. What would it be like? I don't believe in perfection, so I don't think it'd be a perfect world, but would it be better? Would it be more peaceful, more sustainable, and more hopeful? You bet your bottom loony it would, but because of inflation, it's toony. You bet your bottom toonies it would. You know what I think we're scared of? I think we're really scared of our wallet wearing out. You know, like, we won't have two cents to rub together. Like, we are scared of scarcity, right? And if you look at the news, if you bother to open the news these days, my goodness, you see it everywhere. We are running out of vaccines, running out of doctors, running out of nurses, running out of patient beds, and open ERs. We're running out of patience and compassion and honesty and the ability to just listen and have a conversation with each other. 
We're running out of grain right now. Thank goodness their shipments have started from Ukraine. We're running out of water because of global warming, right? Study out today says you cannot drink rainwater safely because there are so many man-made chemicals in rainwater. It needs to be treated. We're running out of housing, running out of the basics to meet uh, our everyday make ends meet because of inflation. We're running out of semiconductors and computer chips. Our, our American friends are saying we're running out of justice given what's happening with Roe versus Wade. We're running out of time. Lorna and I said that for the first time after having a month off. We laughed. We were back to work one week and we were saying, there's no time. Running out of time. How quick that happened. You know, if you're working at Pearson right now, they are they're running out of ways to get people back their lost luggage, right? We are running out of so much right now. And I've been around 40 years, man, and in the church, it's always been the same conversation, running out of volunteers, running out of money, running out of steam. And the pandemic has had a tremendous cost on every part of society. You know, so when we are afraid, I think that fear actually gets named very clearly for us in our society is we're afraid about money. All those things come down to dollars and cents. Nothing is more stressful than our finances for a lot of people. And we're convinced that money is the key to the kingdom of God. I want to read you a uh, quote from my favorite epistle in the New Testament. It's called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And it's by Douglas Adams. And he writes, observing the planet Earth, he says, This planet has, or rather had, a problem, which was this. Most of the people living on it were unhappy for pretty much all of the time. Many solutions were suggested for this problem, but most of these were largely concerned with the movement of small green pieces of paper, which was odd because, on the whole, it wasn't the small green pieces of paper that were unhappy in the first place. Where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Where's our heart today? What kind of savings plan are we investing in? Don't be afraid. It's okay to be afraid. Where fear is, your faith will also be. Because the Spirit is, we are not alone. And the gospel reminds us of what this flourishing life, this abundant life, this kingdom life that Jesus talks about is about. It's not dependent on the number of Benjamins or Bitcoins or John A. McDonald's or MasterCards you got in your wallet. It is solely dependent on your ability to create and sustain community, on relationships. When you have right relationship with yourself, with your neighbor, with the creation, and with the creator, abundant life is sustainable for all. And that's why Jesus talks about, hey, you should go seek justice and help the oppressed and defend the orphan and plead for the widow and sell what you have so there's room at the table for others to take a seat. He's saying there's a way to create a community savings plan so nobody gets lost in the cracks and gaps of greed and ignorance. If you want an investment that will never go down in value, it will only ever go up, invest in relationship. Invest in community. You will never be sorry for it. You know, we often say to each other, don't read the Bible literally, but so many of us are disturbed when Jesus says, sell what you own and give it to the poor. You know, I don't think Jesus is saying to our partners who are caring for their spouses day in and day out today, you need to give more than what you're giving. Jesus is not saying to frontline healthcare workers, you know, yeah, I've been giving enough over the last two years, I think you should give a little more. Jesus isn't saying to church staff and volunteers who have shouldered this place in such amazing ways over the last two years, you're not giving enough at church, you know, you can kind of step it up a little more there. It's interesting, my friends who say I need to read the Bible more literally and more seriously, I can't help but notice they all have bank accounts and houses and cars, right? So it's that we read particular parts of the Bible literally, which is a choice, but we don't read the whole thing literally if you're listening to Jesus today, right? So we need to remember that when we look at the scriptures. What's the bigger picture? And I think the bigger picture for me is being faithful in our fear. Right? Living in the abundance of creation by living in right relationship. And when we do that, right, we're not living in fear. We're paying attention. We're ready for what the Spirit is doing to receive it. And we might just get a surprise. And Jesus uses a kind of funky analogy at the end of this. So let me translate a little bit for everybody. One of the Jewish traditions would have been that when you got married, the groom would make their way through the village to the bride's house. And the bride's family would be responsible for throwing a big feast for the groom and so on. And this was the way it worked. It was kind of an expected transaction, right? The master and the servants, all this language. But Jesus doesn't just reverse that whole idea. He completely rewrites it. Because when the master shows up, 
They're, Jesus, when he talks about the master, they're dressed in an apron. They've got their oven mitts on. They're ready to throw everybody a feast. So this image where we have greater and least, least or greater, this whole thing, Jesus gets rid of it all, and suddenly there is a circle of care. Everyone is feeding and caring for each other, and that is what happens when we discover our faith in the midst of our fear. That's the power of faith. It's okay to be afraid, because where your fear is, there your faith will also be. Because God is, we are not alone. Let me share this last quote as we come to the end here um, from that beloved epistle, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You've got to go read it if you haven't seen it yet. I haven't read it. Douglas Adams writes, love this one. And then one Thursday, nearly 2,000 years after one man had been nailed to a tree for saying how great it would be to be nice to people for a change, a girl sitting on her own in a small cafe in Rixmansworth suddenly realized what it was that had been going wrong all this time. And she finally knew how the world could be made a good and happy place. The time, it was right. It would work, and no one would have to get nailed to anything anymore. Oh, for a world where we find our faith in the midst of our fear, and no one has to get nailed to anything anymore. That is the good news for us. It is possible. No better time than now, no better time than here. Friends, the spirit in me honors the spirit in you. And all the people said, Amen. Thank you so much, Tony. Friends, our offering will now be received. We invite you to give as you're able. 
And um, for those online, uh, you're certainly welcome to visit our webpage and make a donation. We would really appreciate that. Help sustain our ministry here at the church. And so we can keep coming to you live in so many places around the world and in this country. Friends, please give as you're able. Amen. As our amazing usher team, Gloria and Len, come forward, uh, I'm reminded that um, if, if folks are wondering if you're watching online and you saw anybody doing this, or you're in the sanctuary and going, what are they doing? It's not some kind of like witchcraft or something. It's, it's a way of saying, you know, I don't have an envelope or money to put in because I'm giving on pre-authorized remittance. So just like a lot of things work these days, like Netflix or iTunes or whatever, it's just a way of deciding how much you can give weekly to the church, and it just automatically comes out whether you're in church or on vacation or there's a COVID wave uh, because that's what really sustained us through the pandemic. So thank you to everybody who gives in all the ways that you do. And especially too for envelope givers, man, who would like trudge down the church and pop it in the mailbox. <laughs> you know, uh, it was amazing. Uh, we are so blessed. So friends, thank you. And let's give thanks together. Let us pray. We are surrounded by abundance, people who care, who seek to do what's right and good for the sake of a world where there's room for all. We are surrounded by community and creation, by grace that sustains us and faith that urges us to live and grow together. May the gifts we offer today be a reminder that where our treasure is, there our heart will also be. May our hearts be glad that you ask us to give, not as the world gives, not from what is in short supply or what can run out, we aren't asked to give what a thief can steal or moth destroy. We don't have to give from our scarcity, but from our abundance is your invitation. Just as you give and give and give again to your people and your creation. Our cup runs over today. Thank you, Holy One, for the sacred gift of life. May our treasure be found in how we care for it and how we care for one another. Amen. Time to pray. I want to invite you to just take a deep breath. And find that still, quiet center. It has been said that courage is fear that has said its prayers. And so I offer today a prayer of fear that is seeking a life beyond itself. Loving and ever-present God, may we touch what we fear most and find that you are there. May we see fear unfolding in the lives of others and be the voice who says, you are not alone. May we apprehend the fears of our world and recognize that inside of us is a spark of hope that cannot be put out. It can only be shared. And we share it now with those who need it. For our world leaders whose decisions impact so many. 
for our United Church of Canada and our new moderator, Carmen Lansdowne, and our executive secretary, Michael Blair. For the community of Bedford United and those among us who are wrestling with fear and doubt. This morning, we remember especially Lori Edwards and her late mother, Wynne, members of our online community. And we remember Jean and John Morgan. And we lift up to you those names in our hearts, those who need that spark of hope. Holy God, bond us gladly to each other when we are afraid, that we would know at the end of every fear there is you and only you. Amen. If you're able, I'd love it if you stand. We're going to sing together more voices 106. I am the dream. Vacation's good, but it feels really good to be here today, doesn't it, Matt? Yeah. It's good to be back with you, and I don't know if anyone else feels it, but I just feel a sense of peace, and it's, it's a good feeling. I am the dream. I am the dream, and you the dreamer I am the song and you are the rhyme you are the tune sung in every silence you are the now in the endless stream of time I am the bell and you the sign Friends, as we come near the end of our time to go out into that beautiful sunny day, just a reminder that uh, Katie was praying for, for Lori and her family. So some of you would have known Wynne Edwards. She was 95. She's also, her nickname was Queen Ra. I cannot wait to do Wynne's Celebration of Life on Tuesday at 2 p.m. So if you know the family or you'd like to support, we'll be right here to do that. Prayers for everybody who's working their way through their life today. And let's share a blessing as we get ready to sing our way out. Go, hearts free of fear, not because there is nothing to be scared of, but because we know the secret of this universe, that within our fear lies the mustard seed of faith, that when nurtured with prayer and attention, yields shelter for all who seek it, a shelter of peace, love, hope, and justice. May we go and grow the kingdom of God in all we say, sing, pray, and do as we leave this place until we meet again. And all the people said, Amen. This little light of mine, Mr. James. Let's leave clapping and rejoicing today, shall we? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. 
This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I gotta pick on Matt for a second, sorry. I just realized that Matt cannot have a conversation and clap on beat. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Have a great week, everyone. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.